Hey, it's Joel. We're at Form Next 2025 at the Atlix booth, and I'm here with my buddy Eric. What's going on? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Great. So Atlix wasn't always Atlix, right? We were Trump before, correct? Correct. Yeah, Trump uh, has a long legacy of building machines that uh, are uh, stalwart uh, industrial grade production machines. That's why you get something like this, with the, which is a 10th generation machine, correct? You're right. This is the latest generation of our, our industrial production machine. So yeah. you get all of that history and now you've got the TruePrint 5000. Take me through the TruePrint 5000. What's the first thing that comes to mind as far as a feature rich machine? This machine has four one, one kilowatt lasers, uh, and if we start with uh, four. Wow. But more lasers is not necessarily better. Okay. This machine is a 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter by 400 millimeter depth machine. We judge that as the right uh, build volume for the requirements of the industry today. So we judge that four lasers was the right, 1K lasers was the right uh, number. They're, they're Trump lasers. The principal key differentiator that I want to bring to the, to the, to the audience today is uh, our automated multi-laser alignment. We're aligning and calibrating the lasers every layer, as opposed to others who put a calibration plate in, calibrate the lasers, take the calibration plate out, run the machine, and hope for the best. If you're doing something per layer, are you sacrificing print time to do the per layer? 600 milliseconds. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that quick? Yeah, not at all. And and of course, of course, we're, uh, we're we're spreading material in two directions, so the idle time of the machine is is reduced. All right. So automated multi laser alignment. Okay. That's key. The, uh, I guess the next most important thing in a in a in a laser powder bed fusion system is the gas flow, because you know we're we're running inert gas uh, across the build surface to to take away the the smoke load that comes from the uh, melting process, right? Right. Yeah. The, the inert gas, so it it doesn't fill the chamber. You flow it over the top? Lasers have to get to the surface yeah, and, of course. and they can't go through the smoke and through the spatter so you have to clear that away. Okay. We use a, uh, a, a laminar side flow technique that as opposed to a top down technique and we, we were able to show that the gas flow dynamics are everywhere the same on the build plate. Oh. That's key because if you're building a part in the, in the outer corners of the build plate as opposed to the center, you need to have the same laser intensity and the same glass flow dynamics because those are the two physical properties that define the material characteristics on the part. But <laughs> that's not all. <laughs> Automation is important too, right? Absolutely. In, in the guts of this machine uh, are two build cylinders. So there's one cylinder waiting and one cylinder that's up against the build chamber. Okay. So after this build is done, the machine automatically caps the build to keep it inert. It drives it down and it moves over into the right hand position here. And then an idle empty container is waiting and it's automatically brought in and kissed up to the bottom of the build chamber, all while keeping the inert environment so you don't have to dump the uh, gas load. Oh, okay, so if this finishes at four o'clock in the morning and no one's on shift, it just starts over again and you've maintained an inert load in both, like the gas is not sacrificed. Correct. That's Correct. cool. Nor, nor, is, nor is exposure of the parts, right? Right, right. and that's very important too for so a consistent part quality. The machine, exactly, so the machine will restart by itself in 15 minutes. Well then, with the one that finished and you've maintained that inert load, yep. then a machine operator can come along move that out and you've maintained that inert load. That, Absolutely. That whole, come, yeah, it's so closed, the, the, right? The, the, yeah, so the empty the empty build tanks come in on that side of the machine and the finished builds come in on this, this side of the machine capped and then they go into the unloading station also inerted and they're cleaned out. So the only time you uh, expose the part to uh, the atmosphere is after it's been completely cleaned and the powder has been removed and in a closed loop inert environment brought back to the powder handling station and then you remove the part. Wow. Well then, so this is one of the parts. I know you've got other parts in the stand that are really big. Yep. What are some of your favorite examples of what this machine has been able to do? Well, look, we have a, we have a big part over there that's a, uh, a shower head for uh, uh, semiconductor uh, processing equipment. So it's a very complex fluidic network where plating uh, materials are, are pushed through to, to uh, manufacture uh, semiconductor parts. Oh, okay. Uh, parts. Yeah. Well, and something like that with the, with the fluidics in it is not something that they could manufacture any other way, no, correct? No, the only way, no. That's, that's the beauty of additive. Additive is, uh, is enabling geometries that were never before uh, uh, realizable. What yeah, else yeah. you got over there? 
medical devices, uh, dental, uh, defense, uh, uh, defense and aerospace. Well, sure, defense and aerospace, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, wait a minute, dental. Is there a lot of metal additive in dental? Lots. It's it's crown and crown. Is it really? Crown and bridge. Crown and bridge. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know those were additive made. I thought yep. that was a doctor. Pa that's a, that's a patient specific uh, medical device area because every one of them is different. Yeah. And that's why uh, additive manufacturing or, or 3D printing is perfect for that. Most. 3D printed medical devices, implants, uh, are made with additive manufacturing in order to introduce the trabecular structures on the surfaces of the of the parts, which help uh, promote osteointegration, basically yep. for, for bone integration. Right. And it's the additive's ability to make those very fine lattice structures that uh, you know enables those parts to be successful once implanted. I have had some metal additive bone screws, and I was able to do a demonstration how bone screws could get themselves into the trabricular structure of the bones easier. I did, I did a demonstration and I printed in a polymer the trabricular structures, but you're saying that the implant parts themselves can be printed with that structure for osteointegration. Yeah, t titanium is a, is a, is a wonder uh, material because it just so happens to be very biocompatible yeah. and promote the best uh, 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 osteointegration. You could Bone really likes well. to titanium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this part is a very interesting part as well. It, uh, I, I don't know if you're aware of what, uh, what the no, function this is. No, this is a suppressor. A suppressor, yeah. And you would 3D print this because being able to manufacture that part would either by hand take a long time or you wouldn't make it this way at all. Well, yeah, so suppressors are typically made with uh, an outside tube and a variety of other components internally and it's assembled. Yeah. And, and those suppressors work quite well, right? But as, uh, as it turns out, the best way to make the most effective suppressors is uh, using uh, additive manufacturing. That's so cool. Because we can make this very complex internal structure uh, in, in one go. So the suppressor- well, That's it, in one go. In one in go. In one go. And you can see on the, the build plate there with a hundred of these suppressors on one layer. And of course you can, you can add another layer well, of course, on top yeah. of that. Yeah. But I mean, really that, that lends itself to the power of additive because if you take less time to make the part, right. then the cost is reduced, the time to produce is reduced, and it's, it's a solution for multiple problems. It just has to enter those industries. Look, that's the challenge for us uh, uh, additive manufacturing equipment suppliers, right? In order to make a machine better and faster, the machine doesn't get cheaper, the machine gets more expensive. Sure. Right, but that's okay because in order to make parts less expensive, you just have to make machines faster. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, well, but main, faster, maintaining a same quality bar no, you have or to higher. Make, you have to make them faster and better. Yeah, all right. And that's what you get out of this There machine. you go, on the True Print 5000. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, this has been fun, man. Well, I've, I've really uh, enjoyed man, your conversation. This has been yeah. good. Hey, thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in. Print all the metal things. And as always, high five. You want one? Ooh.